Joined in the backfield by Rico Dowdle, another true freshman. On first down, the give is to Dowdle. He's got the edge and picks up a nice gain on South Carolina's first play. Looking at the offense for South Carolina up front, Mason Zandy, the left tackle, the lone senior starter. So they've got 10 returning starters coming back on offense next year. Debo Samuel, we expect to call his name quite a bit. He's played his best ball of his career over the last four games. Another young talent, sophomore, and not to mention also the tight end, Hayden Hurst. Very inter interesting prospect, still learning the tight end position, but he's a good football player. After a gain of eight, down it again, breaking through tackles, and pushes across the 40 for a first down, a gain of 15. Defensively for Western Carolina, they've struggled up front. Only nine sacks all season. Their leading tackler, Tyson Dixon, out today. He's got a shoulder injury. Fred Payne on the back end of the defense, the heart and soul of that Catamount D. There's Debo Samuel on the jet sweep. Samuel into the secondary, into Catamount territory. 14 more. It's a great mix-up already. As you can see, South Carolina mixing up their play calling. Um, that time there, Jet Sweet, Samuel doing a fine job of getting the edge and picking up some tough yardage. This is Bentley on the zone read, and he'll slide down for a gain of a couple. Let's take a look at today's Stay Smart Game Ready Keys to the Game brought to you by Holiday Inn Express. If you are South Carolina, you outweigh the Catamounts by 53 pounds per man on the line of scrimmage. You've got to win there. And if you're Western Carolina, make South Carolina one-dimensional. Either try to take away the pass or the run in order for you to have a shot today and win in this ballgame. On second down, back to the ground, back to Dowdle. He's got some room down the sideline. Touchdown, South Carolina. So much for offensive balance. The run game seems to be the way to go so far. Absolutely. And when you've got a young back like this, you know, and you go back and you look at the, the history of uh, Rico Dowdle, he was a quarterback in high school, but he still ran with this type of presence. And, you know, one thing that stood out yesterday when talking to Kurt Roper, the offensive coordinator, he said, you've got to be a back that breaks tackles on film for us to recruit you. And Rico Dowdle is that guy. You want to see him here? He's going to start off to his right and cut back to his left. Excellent play design. Watch him there. It doesn't look like it's much there. But he sees that crease. He's a very patient runner, and the rest is history. He's at the second level untouched. Nice job of setting up his block on the outside edge. He picks up one from Corey Banks on the edges, and the rest is history. Rico Dowdle, a young, bright prospect. Look at the offensive line putting in work there, outweighing this countermount line. And they just, if, if I am South Carolina, Dowdle will have maybe 15 touches in the first quarter. You go back to this four-game stretch in which South Carolina is 3-1. and one. In the three games they won, they were running the ball more than 60% of the time. The game they lost last week to Florida, they threw it more than they ran it. As good as Bentley has been, he's opened up the running game, and Will Muschamp even told us yesterday, this coaching staff had to get stubborn and stay committed to the run. They've done that the last four games. They're 3-1 and one on the verge of bowl eligibility. Here is Dietrez Newsom leading the FCS in all-purpose yards. And he takes it to the 23-yard line, a return of 23. And Western Carolina on offense for the first time today. The Catamounts from Cullowee, North Carolina, led by their freshman quarterback, Tyree Adams. He's a redshirt freshman. One of 17 players on the watch list for the Jerry Rice Award. That goes to the best freshman in the FCS. And he is the catalyst for an offense that likes to go quickly and very quickly.
Adams will keep it on the zone read. It does not get very far. Jonathan Waltz in the stop. Adams, who's an incredible athlete, they just have not been able to run him as much as they've wanted to because they're so thin at quarterback for most of the season. He's been their only reliable scholarship QB. Out of the backfield, that is dropped by Terrion Robinson. And that may have been a backwards pass. It was. It's a turnover. Backwards pass. That's a fumble. Live ball. South Carolina all over it. And a tough start for Western Carolina. Yeah, just shooting yourself in the foot here. This is clearly going backwards. You can see it here. It's a great call by the officials. Great awareness here on the part of the Gamecocks defense. If you notice, no one in a black jersey even stopped. They realized that this ball was live and could pick it up. It's an excellent job. Nice break here for the Gamecocks. And if you're the Catamounts, you've got to go back to the sideline. And yeah, coach, I feel you. Frustrating seeing that happen in your first, your first drive with the football. Gamecocks have now taken it away 24 times, third most in the country. Out of the backfield, Dowdle, and he's thrown to the ground by Casey. Fred Payne. That was Casey Crosby, rather. And Fred Payne making the tackle. Payne, the heart and soul of this defense, best friends in high school teammates with a guy South Carolina will see next week in Deshaun Watson. Now, that's pretty cool. And, you know, and I tell you what, he's a fine football player himself. And one thing, if you're watching this game, you want to get used to the way he runs the lane. That time there, beating the blocker, he's exceptional when coming downhill to add to the run. That leap to the air, and that pass is incomplete. He wanted Edwards. So it'll be third and long. Yeah, you get what you want there if you're Bentley. You get into your play-action game because your, your running game is working, and you get a route right over the middle once it, you know the linebackers have caved into the run and you just miss your target. And, you know, it takes, it takes a high ball to out-throw Edwards. 6'3 wide receiver who's put up impressive numbers in a, his freshman season. Bentley will step up with the blitz coming. He'll take off and run. He's got the 15 and a first down for South Carolina. Just an excellent decision. And this is why this kid has won the job. You recognize the blitz. The Catamounts really heat up the pocket. Defense coordinator Blake Gideon sending the blitz there on third and long. Bentley just decides there's nothing downfield. He saw all of the blocks were picked up in protection. Great decision there from the freshman. Samuel goes in motion. He gets it on the sweep. Gets a block from Downer. And Samuel marked out of bounds inside the three-yard line. Yeah, these are the types of plays that really stretch out the defense. Nice setup there from Samuel to get the corner to bite inside. This is Dowdle, slips one tackle, leans forward, and he'll be marked down. No, they'll say touchdown. The head judge had marked him down inside the one, but on the far side, the signal came in. Touchdown. They'll look at that one, I'm sure, upstairs. I thought he did stretch across. Yeah, that the second effort looked like he broke the plane in each. I agree. I'm with you. Just look at the effort here, though. Where's the ball when he goes down? He's not willing to go down. He's not down there, and he out. I mean, I think he broke the plane. Pretty good look there. Don't see anything down. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, they're going to bring out the chain, so they did not give him the touchdown, but he does get a first down. <laughs> yeah, I think you go right back to him here to punch it down here on the first. And down. now they're going to look at the play up in the replay booth, so... 
Some confusion on the field. Initially, he had two calls. He had one official saying he was down inside the one. You had a touchdown call coming in from the far end. They conferred. They ruled him down before he crossed the end zone. So that's the call on the field. That's the default call. And now you're looking for indisputable video evidence to see if Dowdle got into the end zone. I mean, this second effort here, that's a nice cut right there, really duping the defender, Daniel Riddle, the middle linebacker. And I thought that second effort, especially when he extended the ball, looked like it got past the line right here. You'll see him extend the ball. Nothing's down. Great job from our camera crew. That looks like a touchdown to me. I guess what is in question is you can't quite tell when that knee goes down and where the ball is when that knee goes down. We haven't seen that replay yet. And if you can't tell because the default call on the field is now that he was down inside the one yard line, this could end up standing. Either way, it would be first and goal from South Carolina inside the one yard line. And they do just need a yard and have three or four tries to get it in. But yeah, I thought at first glance, I thought After he had reached review, over. The ruling on the field stands. Yeah. It's first down for South Carolina. And there just wasn't that angle. We didn't have that camera angle. And for the officials, they need indisputable video yeah. evidence to turn that call over. And that's a case where if that's called a touchdown on the field, I don't think you overturn it. You don't overturn it. Yeah. Well, I think you go back to Dowdle here to try to get this yard and just let your offensive line continue to lean on the smaller defensive front for Western Carolina. Crosby goes in motion. They'll give it to Dowdle. And no question that time. Indisputable. Early on in the ball game, we've already seen South Carolina have success with their inside running game in between the tackles. And Rico Dowdle is built to run in between the tackles. Just a very strong physical runner, compact, sturdy frame that's still adding bulk and strength. And this young man is continuing to grow his game. He's been fun to watch on film and even more fun to watch here in person. PAT by Elliott Fry, the school's all-time points leader, is good. Uncle Rico, a couple of early touchdown runs. 14-0 Gamecocks. On the left, you see Sean Elliott, South Carolina's offensive line coach. And it's not easy before the game to be the O-line coach for either of these two programs. South Carolina, uh, they like to get in with their O-line coach, rough them up a little bit. Western Carolina <laughs> takes it to a whole nother level. Look at Pat Mills. He's the coach. Shirts coming off. Wait for it. Wait for it. Boom. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> what a wonderful tradition. Look, there are players all across the country right now that wish they could rough up their coach. Trust me. So the fact that they're even doing that, I, I admire the offensive line coaches for getting in there and mixing it up with the players. I give Pat Mills credit. He stood in there for a while. He, he held his own for a little while. <laughs> This is Newsom across the 15. Stood up shy of the 20 yard line. He's on the return. The head coach for Western Carolina, Mark Spear, in his fifth season. Been a rough season for the Catamounts. Only two wins this year, but they were coming off back to back seven win campaigns. And I'm sure it's of note to the folks here in Columbia. He is a Clemson alum, as is his offensive coordinator, Brad Glenn. Palmetto Bowl next week with South Carolina visiting Clemson. Off play action, Adams airmails his receiver. And it'll bring up second and ten. Target was Brad Schwann. Starting lineup for Western Carolina. If it's caught by a wide receiver, odds are it's a Robinson. Terrion, Spearman, and Jacob. Spearman's the one who's been getting looks from the NFL. Yeah, and he was hot last week. Ten catches for 155 yards versus Furman. Here's Newsom. 
And he's to the 23-yard line, a gain of five. Defensively for South Carolina, Darius English, eight sacks. That was good for fourth in the SEC entering the weekend. Holloman has been a veteran stable in that defense for years now. And on the back end, Jamarcus King, Rashad Fenton. They've got some exciting young corners who they're counting on. There's Adams. He'll step up and run. He's got the 35, a first down to the 45 and beyond. Finally brought down by King, a gain of 24. You know, and in talking to the Western Carolina staff this week, they want him to do more of this, but you alluded to it earlier that this is not a design run. This was him just picking up yardage, a good decision there, and, and I think they should do more of that to get him involved with the running game. Newsom is stopped shy of midfield by Marquavius Lewis. Second down. Time throws too high, wanted Swan, and it's third down. Yeah, it, it's clear to see the talent that Tyree Adams has. He's an athletic quarterback, a true dual threat that's still working to develop his passing game. And we've seen him today already on a few of his throws throw it above the wide receiver. That time there, I thought the timing was bad, didn't necessarily set his feet, and now for Tyree Adams. will step up and run and using his feet he picks up another first down that's twice now on this drive today stay smart game ready keys to the game once again brought to you by holiday and express if you're western carolina use this tempo as they are right now as a weapon try to wear down the south carolina defense and if you're south carolina defend the run pass option successfully that is what western carolina likes to do newsom into the secondary and beyond touchdown western carolina whoa A 39-yard touchdown run by Dietrez Newsom, and the Catamounts on the scoreboard. Look, he's not scared of SEC competition. We talked about what he did um, versus the SEC last season. This time here, these are the types of plays that get you a look at the next level. Dietrez getting through the, to the second level and really showing some breakaway speed on the back end and some toughness and physicality to finish off the run. PAT by Logan Howard is good. A seven-play, 82-yard drive. A couple of big QB runs, and then Newsom, 39 yards to the house. He's got a chance to hit 1,000 on the season today. Dietrez Newsom with a 39-yard touchdown run to get Western Carolina on the board. And in these big games against SEC competition, he's played well last year, as we showed you earlier, went over 100 yards against Tennessee and to Texas A&M. If I'm an NFL scout, I come in and I, I want to see him against the best competition. So just naturally, I turn on the film of SEC teams. And one thing, when you watch him on film, he's a very decisive runner. He's very strong at the point of attack, hard to to bring down with, with a single man. And, and I believe that that's the type of player at the next level. You could find a place on special teams and perhaps even um, as a short yardage back at the next level. I, I think Detrez Newsom is going to get some looks at the NFL. He needs just 37 yards to get to 1,000 for the second consecutive season. Debo Samuel, burst of speed. He's got the 40. No one in front. Debo all the way to the end zone, 100 yards. Oh, my. He was like a bullet through that hole. It's like somebody yeah. wanted their beach cruiser back. <laughs> my. Wow. You talk about the pace and the speed. This, this was 
set up by his ability to say, I'm not making any cuts. <laughs> he saw a crease and an opening, and he went to it. PAT by Fry, good. 21 to 7, so Western Carolina did not have much time to celebrate that last touchdown. You're right, watch the burst and acceleration. Great blocking up front. And then there to break through the tackle from the kicker. One of the toughest jobs in America with trying to tackle a guy like Debo Samuel in the open field. The strength and the ability. Logan Howard just didn't have enough to drag him down. And Debo playing like Debo there, bowling through people and being a bully. There wasn't a lot of wiggle to that run. That was no, straight sir. line <laughs> speed. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, here's what Williams Bryce has to do for next year. You remember the Debo theme from Friday? Of course I do. It sounded kind of like the Jaws theme. <laughs> they need to play the Debo theme for Samuel <laughs> next year. You know what? He is playing like Debo on the edges and now yeah. getting even involved. And you know it, Nish. I talked to you all week about how impressed I was watching this young man on film. He's a complete wide receiver, but he's showing um, he's showing things that at this level as a sophomore, you're not supposed to have a part of your game. And, you know, that's a prime example. They're contributing on special teams, the maturity this young man is showing. And we talked about uh, Brian Edwards and what he can bring to this team. But you've got another guy on the opposite side like Debo Samuel. And Will Muschamp said it. He said, I'll take those two wide receivers of anybody in the SEC. He's got that type of confidence in them. Short kick taken by Western Carolina. That's crossing, and he's able to return that into South Carolina territory. Some special teams fireworks. Fireworks on the plains tonight. Auburn taking on Alabama A&M. Tigers without starting quarterback Sean White, so Jeremy Johnson will start. And then later tonight, Ole Miss and Vandy. How about the young freshman quarterback in Oxford? Shea Patterson stepping in for the injured Chad Kelly, and Boy, he has sparked that fan base much in the same way Bentley has sparked the South Carolina fan base. Indeed. To the air, and that was intended for Swan. Miscommunication, second and ten. No question about it. Those, there go the RPOs that we were referring to, the run pass options, where the quarterback decides he can either hand the football off or throw the football. That time there, the wide receiver and uh, the quarterback just not on the same page. Here's Newsom. And he's running strong, finding room, and it looks like he's got a first down. And Ethan James. Chris Lamont's down for South Carolina. They're already thin in the secondary. Yeah. It's not something you want to see here, especially. I don't believe we've seen Chris Moody yet today. Moody was a game time decision, according to the coaches. It was Zach Weeks, or pardon me, Zach Weeks, watch number 63 get out in front of this run, and Big Boy was rolling, and then got up on a safety and mashed his face in the dirt. Newsom here, I'm um, off to a hot start. 7.24 to go, opening quarter. If you're just joining us already, a lot of action. South Carolina, a couple of rushing touchdowns from Rico Dowdle. Debo Samuel took a kickback, 100 yards. And Dietrez Newsom, a 39-yard touchdown run for the lone Catamount score. And that last run by Newsom, enough for a first down. Dietrez Newsom came in leading the FCS in all-purpose yards. Ran for a school record of 277 against Chattanooga earlier this year. And they rely on him to do so much. He's a part of the return game. A big threat as a receiver out of the backfield. Gets a breather now as Connell Young, the freshman from Greensboro, North Carolina, checks in. Adams will throw off play action. Incomplete. Dropped by Spearman Robinson. They're getting the look they want. You know, the RPOs are providing options for them. And it was interesting yesterday in talking to the defensive coordinator.
Coach Robinson for the Gamecocks. He said the run pass options are the great equalizer because of the things that they present a defense. And you've seen there have been open men. Um, Adams just hadn't been able to connect. Yikes. Connell Young with nowhere to go. Kier Thomas, one of the standout freshman defensive yeah. linemen with a TFL. Yeah, they like this kid. He's very athletic, and wow, that time they're just spotting the football. And he wasn't fooled by any of the movement on the back end as he gets the tackle for loss and now sets up an opportunity for this pass rush to get after the quarterback on third and long. Adams has made plays with his feet on these passing downs. He'll run it again. Broke away from a small ambush. And this is going to be close, but I appear, it appears he's got the first down. So again, Tyree Adams using his feet to move the chains. Well, they only rushed three there, and they dropped eight. <laughs> and for the second time, we've seen him use his feet and make a good decision. And um, that time there really caught the Gamecocks defense off guard and then made a couple people miss in the open field. Fantastic finish there from Adams. He's got 50 rushing yards already in this first quarter. Newsom back into the game, a couple of cuts, and that falls backward to the 22, a gain of three. 2016, that's the year we're in. Nine minutes plus gone by in this first quarter. Both teams have combined for negative one passing yards. Minus one total passing yards in this game. You're stunned. <laughs> this is Newsom on the direct snap. Lowers his head and he's taken down at the 19. Gets a little further than that. And it'll bring up a third down and short for Western Carolina as Newsom comes off the field. Hey, he's. He's winded, you know, and, uh, you know, nice creativity there, trying to get Adams to motion out, use him as a distraction, and take Newsom to the opposite side. And now you've got a good third down situation for you, despite not having your workhorse, Newsom, in the ball game. This is Young. And he is going to be stopped shy of the marker. It is fourth down now. For Western Carolina and if you're Mark Spear I know it's very early in the game but given what you're up against do you go for it yeah I think you do and it looks like they are and um, you don't blame them here you're inside the red zone this is a vital fourth down this is where South Carolina's defense has also excelled in the red zone young up the middle, breaks a tackle, stiff arm, touchdown, Connell Young with brute force. For the Catamounts of Western Carolina, they were hit in the mouth a couple of times, they have responded, and it is a seven-point game, a lot of fireworks in this first quarter, 21-14. Peter Burns has a studio update after the kick. This is a short one. Here's Debo Samuel. Took the last one back. And he's taken down at the 28 as we check in with Peter. Anish, it was a classic SEC right now, presented by State Farm, although we're well, not right now, just a few minutes ago. LSU, fourth and goal, looking to take the lead for the third time in the game. The Gators with the goal line stand. Florida headed to Atlanta for the second straight year. Back to you guys in Columbia. There you go, Florida, the SEC East champion. That was the makeup game with LSU. It was supposed to be in Gainesville, moved to Baton Rouge because of the hurricane, and the Gators still able to win. Tight end Hayden Hurst, and he takes a few tacklers with him across the 40. Hurst, a 23-year-old former walk-on, was a professional baseball player, two seasons in the Pirates organization, only a sophomore when it comes to classification, and another building block for Will Muschamp. 
Yeah, I love. I finally love. got some positive passing yards, <laughs> by no the way. Doubt. I love these older recruits when they come in because of their maturity, and he certainly fits the mold. Rico Dowdle got a yard, maybe, in second and nine. Dowdle bottled up last week by Florida, just 18 rushing yards on nine carries, but had back-to-back 100-yard -back games before that. Once again, it's Dowdle. And tripped up by Payne, no gain. And it's third and long, and now this becomes a huge down for Western Carolina. And this is where they've struggled all season, getting off the field on third downs. His anticipation. I mean, he was already near the line of scrimmage before the ball was even handed off. Fred Payne, I'm telling you, this young man at the safety position is a difference maker. And the way that he runs to the football, he doesn't mind sticking his helmet in there and getting dirty. Opponents converting 53% of the time on third down against the Catamounts. Here's David Williams, breaks the tackle, and spins across the 45 for a first down. And that is a huge missed opportunity for Western Carolina. Yeah, you got to read your scouting report, though, because David Williams is 6'1", 220. He's a man. <laughs> and you saw the first tackler just bounce off of him. You've got to wrap up, and you've got to gang tackle this young man. Bentley checking down. It wasn't his first option going through his progressions, but my, oh, my, Williams running like he's angry. Back to Williams, the junior out of Philadelphia. And he takes it inside the 40. A gain of about six. And it looks like Carolina is trying to get into some of their tempo offense. And they don't run as fast as Western Carolina, but this is something this coaching staff has said. We want to work more towards tempo and also implementing more run pass options as Bentley in this offense continues to mature. Dowdle back into the game at running back. Bentley has thrown it four times. He's three out of four. Up the middle, Dowdle. Ball comes up. Western Carolina has covered it up. Avery Worsham recovered the fumble. And the Catamounts have the ball back. Mark Spear, huge grin on his face. Great effort there on the backside. They came out and punched the football out. I can't quite tell what number it is, but right there it looks like maybe 95 Daniel Nash is who poked that ball out, and it was intentional. He couldn't tackle him, but great awareness there. As you see the young defensive coordinator, Blake Gideon, just took over the play calling duties, and that there will get you hype. Adams on first down, incomplete intended for Spearman Robinson. You mentioned Blake Gideon. He was a former Texas Longhorn. Western Carolina fired Dustin Landry, its defensive coordinator, at the end of October. Just wasn't the right fit. He was a first-year D.C. Gideon doing the play calling, but it's defensive coordinator by committee for the Catamounts. Yeah, and he's doing a good job. I, you know, even in speaking to him this week of getting the opinions of more experienced and more mature coaches and then adding that to his game plan, that young man has a, a great and bright coaching career ahead of him. Adams will keep it on the zone read, one cut. He's run the ball well, and he's got what appears to be another first down. And back to your point on Gideon, his mentor, Will Muschamp. <laughs> he is a Muschamp disciple and made no secret about that when we talked to him this week. Yeah, they, those two are very familiar with one another, and Muschamp took him under his wing early on. Played and coached under Muschamp is Newsom fighting for a yard held up by Jamarcus King. Yeah, and this offense, you, you look, you go back and look at what Tyree Adams has done, particularly on third down. Yeah, he's run for first down three times on third down, 24 yards, 11 and 15. That's the formula that's been working for them. So they'll try to chip away at it again here on second down and then set up a good third down situation. Out of the backfield, the Newsom breaks one tackle, bounces to the outside. And Newsom out of bounds. They'll mark him out across midfield and another first down for Western Carolina. And another strong run from Detrez Newsom. 
I mean, he is putting some good stuff on film right now for NFL scouts to watch. That was just a great second effort. And anytime he does a good job of keeping his feet clean, but he's got those strong, powerful legs, too, to use. Connell Young gains a couple. And that will take us to the end of quarter number one. Early on, it looked like we might be heading toward a blowout. Yep. Rico Dowdle busted a big TD run. Dowdle punched it in from short yardage. Since then, it's been mostly catamounts. They've got a couple of rushing touchdowns, and they're driving down to one quarter. South Carolina leads on the scoreboard. The difference, Western Carolina's first offensive series, they fumbled it away on their second play. South Carolina recovered, punched it in for a score. Those seven points off turnovers, the difference. Absolutely, and then special teams with the big return. The Catamounts have scored on their last two drives. Adams will run again. He's been dangerous with his feet. And finally gang tackled at the 46. It'll bring up third down. Western Carolina three for four on third down, and it's been Tyree Adams using his feet here. Absolutely, and you know, they've, they've shown him a myriad of things uh, South Carolina's defense has. They've dropped eight, they've rushed five. What will they do here? You know, and it may even what be a situation where you put a spy on him because he's already rushed for three third down conversions. Four-man pressure, Adams rolling out. He's got the edge, he'll run again. Make it four third down conversions for Adams. Wow. And all with his feet. Talk about putting your team on your back. The pressure up the middle with a five-man blitz. Coach Robinson heated up the pocket. But he is just slippery and elusive. And as you see, defenders just missing him. He hasn't had a great day throwing the football. Only one completion. But on passing downs, he's been exceptional when he's gotten loose out of the pocket. South Carolina getting lined up. Play clock winding down. Empty look. Adams slings one over the middle. There's Terrion Robinson. Terrion Robinson with a gain of nine. He had 15 catches in a game earlier this season. Ten came in one quarter. Wow. <laughs> Video game type numbers. I don't even know if you can do that in <laughs> video games anymore. <laughs> now they'll shift. It's Newsom on the direct snap. And Newsom takes it across the 20 for a first down. Now, now that is that was a creative play there. They went to the direct snap and actually that Newsom operate the zone read and Tyree Adams the quarterback was the running back watch the play design here great shift this time they didn't send him in motion but it's Newsom who's actually running the zone read he makes the right read and finds space right in the middle of that Gamecock defense this is Newsom once more taken down near the 15 by Bryson Allen Williams Allen Williams a junior whose first offer was from Florida when Will Muschamp was the head coach in Gainesville. And Western Carolina, they've had six touchdowns in their last seven red zone trips. Can they keep it going here? Newsom stumbles after a pickup of a yard. You look at South Carolina's defense this season, and it's been a bend but don't break defense but what's made this unit successful they force turnovers and they've been very good inside the 20 in the red zone yeah they tighten up down here and partly because they go single high safety and man on the outside edges and put a lot of a lot of pressure on their cover guys to take people out of the ball game on the edges and then they allow their front seven to really get after the quarterback and stuff the run Pressure coming off the edge from Allen Williams, and it's incomplete fourth down. 
So that time, South Carolina changes it up on third down. They bring pressure, forcing the incompletion. Yeah, great timing on the outside blitz and the rush, and that's what forced him to stand up in the pocket. And the defense there going with a five-man rush, and they brought it from the opposite side of the field and kind of switched and changed into it. Bryce and Allen Williams, the one applying the pressure on the edge and forcing Adams up into the pocket and helping his team get off the, the defense, get off the field on third down. 32-yard attempt for Logan Howard, and he puts it through, so Western Carolina able to tack on three more. We're going to see it from the outside pressure here coming from Bryce and Allen Williams. And the referee almost caught it. <laughs> Locker rooms, meeting rooms, weight rooms, training rooms, dining rooms, an equipment room. And of course, you got to have the all important players lounge. Of course. You know, and that makes a big deal. When I went to the University of Texas in 1998, our facilities were revamped. And I can tell you this much it feels really good opening up a new place like that, and the players will enjoy it, and it'll help with recruiting, certainly. Debo Samuel from the two. He's taken one kick back for a score. And he'll be stopped at the 25. Tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern, SEC inside. And all access pass to Mississippi State football for their game against Arkansas. Never before seen footage and sounds from pregame to postgame. You can watch it right here Wednesday on the SEC Network. A.J. Turner into the game at running back for South Carolina. He was questionable this week with an ankle injury. He was the lead back earlier in the year. Western Carolina showing blitz. The give is to Turner. And he torpedoes across the 30 to the 34. A yard shy of the first down, second and one. South Carolina doing a good job right now of making sure that that horizontal motion is holding the defensive ends, which is allowing them to have more spacing in the middle to run right up the middle. And they've had some success early on in this ball game, running in between the tackles, particularly in between the two guards. Crosby in motion. Turner up the middle. And he bulldozes to the 46-yard line, a gain of 13. And right now, South Carolina peppering the middle of that defense, as you said. Way on them. You know, we, we talked about it earlier, but this Gamecocks offensive line outweighs the Catamounts by 53 pounds per man. And that's simple formula. And South Carolina has put, they placed more attention to details in their running game, and it's really paying off for them. And this is another step for them to be able to dominate a team that they're better than on paper. Turner, third straight run. A nice gain into Western Carolina territory. You know, sometimes a game like this against an FCS opponent, especially one that struggled this season, you can maybe overlook it. Everybody we talked to within South Carolina yesterday, the importance of this game and winning this game and becoming bowl eligible and yeah. getting this young core of players, those extra practices, it's not lost on them. They know how important that is for the long-term future of this program. You're right, Anish. Fourth straight carry for Turner, ran into a roadblock, and then stopped right at the line of scrimmage by Coleman Cunningham. Yeah, you, you know, bowl games are, not, not only is it great for camaraderie, you get a chance to spend time around your teammates around the holiday season, and it was interesting um, in talking to Coach Robinson and Coach Muschamp, they said, it is not a privilege to be at home during the holidays. <laughs> you want to be at a bowl game. That's their goal. And the turnaround right now, you've got to give Muschamp and his staff a tremendous amount of credit for what they've been able to do and to come in here and to get these players to believe. Bentley to the air. He's got Samuel. First down and more. And Debo takes it to the 22. A pickup of 26. Yeah, th this kid's the real deal. And, and, and I don't think he's a shooting star. I, I think his production, you see him there catching the ball outside his body with his hands and then the run after the catch. He's got it all, you know, and they're continuing to work on his route running abilities and his understanding to be able to find those windows and spacing. But right now for a sophomore, he's as good as they get. A.J. Turner gets a block. Picks up about five, tackled by Cunningham. Well, they had Farrow Cooper here 
for years, yeah. and the big question was who could replace Cooper, who did everything Indeed. for this South Carolina offense. And Debo Samuel looks like the next incarnation of Cooper. I agree. You know, he's a guy you can move laterally. He's one that can get involved in the vertical passing game, and you saw him there just take a short route and turn it into some big yards. This is Bentley, keeps it on the zone read, breaks the tackle, fighting for the extra yards. And he picks up four, it'll bring up third and one. He, he's not what you would call a running quarterback, but he's shifty enough, and we've seen him over the last few weeks make some plays like that with his feet. Yeah, he's not fleet-footed, that's for sure. But what you won't say either is that he's a quarterback that's a sitting duck, and you saw him there, his ability at 6'3", 223 pounds. Look, you gotta, you gotta bring your big boy pads if you wanna tackle him, and you saw him break the first tackle there. A lot of that had to do with his size. On third down, here's Turner. And he's got a first down and goal for South Carolina. Yeah, I like the pace of this offense, and I really like what South Carolina is doing with the football right now. Look, it's no mystery in this stadium right now what they're doing. They're running the football. They're giving the ball to Turner, to Williams, and Dowdle, and saying, win us the ball game. And they're putting their trust in their offensive line, and that is why the key to the ball game for me, for South Carolina offensively, was to win the line of scrimmage, and they're doing that right now. Turner around the edge. And stood up at the two. Tackled by Keon Crossing, second down and goal. A.J. Yes. Turner coming in for this drive and providing quite the spark in the running game. He gets a breather. David Williams, the junior from Philly, back in. Yeah, and you, you, bring, you bring Williams in for two things, to pound the rock or pass protection. So, you know, if I had to guess here, I, I, I think... 33 will, will be handed this football. Bentley throwing to the end zone. Incomplete. He wanted Edwards. And it was too far over the receiver's head. No flag. He was locked up with his DB. He didn't even run around. <laughs> he thought it was a run. <laughs> and, you know, Trey Morgan doing a fine job of locking him up at the line of scrimmage. But Brian Edwards didn't even run a route. And Bentley threw it to him. There was some type of miscommunication. And that sometimes happens when you're running RPOs, run pass options. As a wide receiver, you've got to stay in the ball game. And we've got a timeout by Western Carolina. The diminishing daylight here in Columbia, South Carolina. Senior day at williams Bryce Stadium. The Gamecocks bowl eligible with a win. This game a lot closer than most of us expected so far, but South Carolina has a chance to pad their lead. Third and goal from the two. David Williams in the backfield. Samuel in motion, he gets it on the fly sweep. Samuel gets a block and into the end zone for his second touchdown. It is hard not to like that kid. <laughs> I mean, it, his determination. He had me as yeah, yeah, no doubt, right? I mean, we've seen him a few times today have success horizontally coming across the field, utilizing his speed and his ability to get on the edges and to be tough to tackle in space. That time there, picking up a wonderful block from the running back, David Williams, and the rest was done by the, the guy that's been doing it all, Mr. Debo Samuel. PAT by Elliott Fry is good. Two touchdowns by Samuel, one on a kick return. This one on a fly sweep. South Carolina 28, Western Carolina 17. Against a lot, taking on a Tigers team that's yep. ranked in the top four. But if you can get bowl eligibility today, go to Death Valley and play with house money, play loose, a rivalry game. Remember last year, South Carolina nearly knocked off Clemson. And that Clemson team was unbeaten at the time and did not lose until the championship. You look at why this team changed its fortunes, it has a lot to do with the change at quarterback in Jake Bentley. 
Well, he gave them confidence and hope, and his swag and moxie is really um, spread out through the entire team. And, you know, when you get a player that also, you know, and, and give Will Muschamp credit, you know, that was not the popular choice. I'm not sure if everybody was, was expecting it to pay off the way that he did, but it was something he thought was best for this team, and certainly it has been. Hard to argue with that now. Trez Newsom another first down, a gain of a dozen. And with that run, Newsom crosses the thousand yard mark for the season. Second straight year he's done that. And just the third Catamount running back with back to back thousand yard seasons. He's averaging 7.8 a pop. He's almost, you know, he's 14 yards away from 100 yards here in the first half. Another strong run as he pushes the pile for a gain of six. The other two Western Carolina running backs who had back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons, Darrell Lipford did it in the mid-70s. Brad Hoover did it in 98 and in 99, and then went on to have a very successful career as the fullback for the Carolina Panthers. Again, the shift, and this time it's Newsom who will keep it, and he picks up another first down. So we've seen that shift now with the running back and quarterback. Newsom took a shot there. Lower part of his body. Yikes. Maybe looks like something's in his eye, too. Sometimes dirt or something gets in there. Yeah. He's got 98 yards rushing. Take another look. I really like the design of this play. I mean, it, you know, if you're watching at home, it's one way to make sure he gets the football. He's your best offensive player, no question about it. Watch the violent collision here at the end. Probably something in his eye. Connell Young checking into the game, and now a penalty marker. First penalty of the game, Matt Leffler, our head referee. False start on the offense, number 50. Five yard penalty, first down. A redshirt freshman, Walker Lanning. It's a young offensive line in terms of experience. Tyree Adams entered this season with huge shoes to fill with Troy Mitchell gone. Mitchell a four-year starter and the most prolific passing quarterback in school history. There's Young. He gets a couple of those yards lost back second and long. Jonathan Walton doing a good job of chasing the play down from the opposite side as they go to tempo here, really trying to press the gas and wear down this Gamecock defense. Off play action, Adams floats it down the sideline. That's caught! Inside the 10, reaching! And marked down at the one-yard line, Spearman Robinson. Well, this Catamount team refuses to go away. And Jamarcus King has the responsibility of being on Spearman Robinson the whole game. They're trying to put length on length. That time there, Spearman got behind him, and that was the best ball I've seen from Adams all game long. Connell Young looking for room. Second effort. And he is shy of the goal line, second and goal. Robinson, six foot four, Spearman Robinson. There's three Robinsons who are wide receivers for Western Carolina. Man to man coverage on the back end. This is Newsom, breaks one tackle. And he's turned back, third and goal. Yeah, this is a stout bunch up front when you start talking about when you get in this red zone. You talked about their numbers, and they go man to man on the edges and they stuff the box to stop the run and put pressure on the quarterback, and it's working for him. Jumbo in the game. Adams will go under center. He'll hand it off to Newsom. Stopped again! Fourth and goal. Dante Sawyer in on the play. Getting through a hole. Now you got a fourth down. You I, go for it. Yeah. 
Well, you've had success earlier. They, their, their first for, fourth down attempt went for a touchdown. If that's any indication in your Coach Spear, go for it. Mark Spear wants to think about it before he decides. A timeout by Western Carolina. This was the play that set up the scoring opportunity. Spearman Robinson taking it down all the way to the one yard line. Fourth and goal, Cat. All right, Darren, fourth and goal, Western Carolina. They're going to go for it. Tyree Adams to the outside, throwing for the end zone, incomplete. Turnover on downs, and had Aubrey Payne caught it. He was already out of bounds. It would not have even counted. You, you got to admire Adams' creativity there and Coach Spears' guts. Yeah, you've got Carolina on the ropes here. And one thing, you know, that, yeah, you're right. He was out of bounds and just not the right awareness there on the part of Payne. But anytime the quarterback breaks the pocket, boy, did he take a shot. He just got leveled by Jonathan Walton. Tyree Adams did. But you know, even here, what I think, if, if, if you are Western Carolina, the reason why that was a decision that you could make is you really put the Gamecocks in a tough situation. You know, now you play man on the outside edges, stuff the box, take your chances with one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the edges, and try to force them to punt here from their end zone. Jake Bentley will throw from his own end zone. Down the middle, in traffic, incomplete, broken up by Marvin Tillman. On that last drive, the key play for Western Carolina to get down inside the five. A long pass to Spearman Robinson, and oh so close to getting into the end zone. The knee down right there before that ball can cross the plane. Just inches away. And then South Carolina coming up with a huge goal line stand. Bentley to throw, and he completes to Debo Samuel along the far side. A gain of eight, third and two. And as we mentioned before, this is where the Catamount defense struggles. Getting off the field on third downs has been a season-long issue. And we've also seen South Carolina intentionally, it looks like, go at Keon Cross at number 35, the right cornerback for the Catamounts. They feel like they can win that matchup. On the opposite side, they feel like number 26, Trey, Trey Morgan, is an NFL prospect and um, would like to try to find the right matchup. And Debo Samuel is the right guy to go to. Bentley again to the air. He finds Samuel, who just Amtrak crossing at the 21-yard line. And it's a great opportunity here for Bentley to get into the two-minute offense and to show the command and control he has at the line of scrimmage and the way he communicates with his teammates in order to get them organized to make plays. Bentley down the middle of the field for Edwards, makes the catch in Western Carolina territory. Finally wrestled down by Marvin Tillman after a gain of 41. That was a beauty. <laughs> You want to see what makes this kid special? I mean, he zipped that in. That's a 25, 30-yard pass, and he made it look easy. You know, he's not going to wow you with his arm strength, but he's got plenty to make those types of throws. The handoff to David Williams. And the junior fell inside the 35 at the 33. And with 55 seconds to go in the half, South Carolina calls a timeout. The Gamecocks have two timeouts left. They're driving, looking to add on in the final minute. T Network Plus, that's at halftime. This drive for South Carolina started at its own two-yard line, and Will Muschamp told his freshman quarterback, Jake Bentley, here are the keys. Go, let's see what you can do. And he's now marched the Gamecocks into striking distance. You know, the coaching staff this week said that this was an important game for a lot of these young players to see how they would respond, how they would prepare for the week. This is the leader of their team, Jake Bentley. He's taken over this team. And in two-minute situations, you're right, I mean, she put the ball in the hands of a quarterback, especially if you got Bentley's skill set. Bentley to Edwards. Trying to get out of bounds. Western Carolina won't let him. It's a gain of five. Stopped the clock, so did he pick up enough for a first down? He did. 
Clock will start on the referee's signal. Less than 50 seconds to go, opening half. Bentley back to the air. Near sideline, that's caught. And right, tackled immediately it. by Marvin Tillman. Edwards again with the reception. And another timeout by South Carolina to stop the clock with 41 seconds. Full slate of Week 12 college football games roll on tonight with Auburn looking to bounce back against Alabama A&M. Big prep for the Tigers before they take on the Crimson Tide next week. No Sean White, quarterback for Auburn out. Jeremy Johnson will start. Ole Miss and Vandy, the Rebels, bowl eligible with a win. Been an up and down season, more downs than up for Ole Miss, but Shea Patterson has brought a spark to Oxford, much in the same way that Bentley has to South Carolina. The difference is Ole Miss has been on the national scene. South Carolina looked like a team that had slipped. There were some folks at the start of the year saying, you know, that great run with all those 10 win seasons in a row, maybe the window had closed. And now when you look at the youth on this team, Will Muschamp's track record as a defensive coach, the future looks pretty bright for South Carolina, and especially in the SEC East. I know Florida's going to the championship game this year. Tennessee is underachieved. Georgia's got a new coach. There's a vacuum. Right. There's a vacuum. And there's a chance for South That's Carolina to right. fill that vacuum. They're going to throw this one, and that's Samuel. That's the quarterback, Bentley. <laughs> Apologies. Bentley on the other side makes the catch. Hayden Hurst threw it. A former pitcher in the Pirates organization. Yeah, he can spin it too. Yeah, watch him here. He set him up by taking this, pulling the safety away. Great awareness there from Hurst. He actually looked like a quarterback looking off the safety. And how about he Bentley the making the catch? The <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. 31 seconds to go, opening half, first and 10. Bentley looking deep, incomplete, no flag. Crosby, the intended receiver. He's a big red zone target, four touchdown catches. He was tied up with Kendall White. Yeah, I think this was good coverage here. The ball was a little underthrown. Um, he would have liked to have gotten it more towards the opposite side near the pylon. It wasn't able to quite get there, which put Kendall White in the proper position. Back to the air. Back to the end zone. Incomplete intended for Samuel, but a flag. They went picking on Keon Crossan once again. And just an unfortunate situation for Keon here. Pass interference on the defense, number 35. By rule, the ball will be placed at the two-yard line. First down. A very tough situation for Cross, and he's taken on one of the top young, talented wide receivers in the SEC, and that time it had a handful of jerseys. He's in the right location there. Don't panic if you're at home and you play this position. Like a quarterback, you've got to be cool, calm, and collected to finish plays. That time there, Crossan getting a little too excited and handy. Samuel in motion, he gets it, and he plows in for his third touchdown of this first half. What can't he do? <laughs> wow. Yeah, they're just having success with this play. You know, anytime, yeah, that was a nice collision there by Crossan coming up and putting the stick on, but Samuel had already done the damage. And look at that drive. Ten plays, 98 yards, two minutes. I mean, operated with perfection on the part of Bentley, even though he missed a couple throws. The offense was in great sync and rhythm, and it ended in a touchdown. The true freshman grew up in South Carolina. Played most of his high school ball in the state of Alabama. Left high school a year early. Listen to this hit. Oh! Nothing like hearing a little plastic get moved around. Oh, boy. Violent collision there at the goal line. But Samuel still managed to punch it in. Debo, by the way, is not Samuel's real name. It's Tyshawn. But when he was a kid, his dad saw his son and said he's a guy who doesn't take anything from anybody <laughs> great story and the inspiration for the nickname which for fans of the movie like you of and course. i was from debo from friday which oh, uh, man. 
One of the great characters in, in a comedy movie, yes, wouldn't you say? <laughs> yes, it is. And he's a great character here for the Gamecocks, too. I mean, his role just continues to grow. And, and in talking to the coaching staff, too, I, he's got the right demeanor to be in this role. Um, he doesn't seem like he gets too high, too low. And he's one of those types of players that wants the ball in his hands. He has no problem having it in pressure moments like he just had it there near the goal line. And boy, is he productive. 98 yards in two minutes and 11 seconds. South Carolina's lead cushioned it to 18 as Western Carolina brings it out to the 26. He's put a stamp on this first half of mine. Yeah, I mean, this was a big play, right? Just watch the speed, the acceleration, the burst. I, he made one cut and went 99 yards, and then you see him here catching a slant. The run after the catch, and you see his wiggle, and he's had success twice tonight on getting horizontal, following blockers, and then now setting it up finishing off the two-minute successful drive with force, punching it in the end zone. Debo, oh, Debo Samuel doing his thing tonight. Seven seconds left in this opening half. Dietrez Newsom is going to be turned back after a game of two, and that will take us to halftime. Newsom with 100 yards in the first half for the Catamounts, but Debo has been the story a special teams TD and two rushing touchdowns. South Carolina up by 18. Here's Dory. Against SEC opponents, went over 100 against Tennessee and Texas A&M last year, and now as a junior, 100 yards in the first half. Wow, it's impressive, you know, and, and, and right now you can tell he's running with a tremendous amount of confidence, and if, if you are um, Western Carolina, you come out here and you give the ball to this young man. Um, Detrez is already on pace to get about 30 touches. He had 16 in the first half. I thought the magic number was between 20 and 25, but keep feeding this animal as long as he's doing what he's doing. Catamounts will start at the 25 as we take a look at first half stats. First downs, almost even, rush yards, edge to Western Carolina. Total yards, South Carolina with a slight edge third downs and that's been the problem for Western Carolina's defense all season they have not been able to get off the field South Carolina six for six we'll go to Newsom on first down breaks one tackle and he gets to the 30 for a gain of five. But well, that's what I'm talking about. That's a potential negative play that he turned into good yardage. I mean, he just does a great job of running behind his pads. And when this young man squares up his pads to the line of scrimmage to get going downhill, he's very difficult to stop. Pain motions. Off the zone read. This is... Incomplete, nearly intercepted by Chris Lamonds at third and five. Yeah, Chris Lamonds, they trust him in the nickelback position playing the slot. And watch the hit here that Adams takes after this throw. I mean, boy, he just got leveled there by Darius English. Connell Young, the running back on third down. South Carolina bringing pressure. Adams steps up over the middle, ball tipped, and nearly intercepted. Yeah, DJ Smith disappointed in the official there as he felt like he could have gotten back to the ball. Great coverage. And, you know, Adams here, watch the pace on this throw. It, it's, it's thrown a little bit hard, and it looked like that ball was initially broken up by Rashad Fenton, the starting cornerback as D.J. Smith almost came up with an interception off the tip pass. Chris Lamonts back deep. Ian Berryman, one of the best punters in the FCS. Lamonts had trouble with this one. It goes out of bounds, and he is marked out at the 16-yard line. Week 12 college football continues on the SEC Network. Alabama A&M and Auburn tune up for the Tigers before the Iron Bowl next week. Auburn without its starting quarterback, Sean White. Jeremy Johnson will start, and then it's Ole Miss Bandy. That's the SEC Saturday night game at 8. Shea Patterson looks to lead the Rebels to bowl eligibility.
was really impressed with Jake Bentley at the end of the half and the way he executed during two minutes. Can he come back out and keep that going? I'll let him throw on first down. Look out. Incomplete in the direction of Debo Samuel. Kendall White broke that play up in the backfield. Wow. There was just no way to throw it. He got great jump on this ball and throwing those screens. Fantastic job by Kendall White. The strong side linebacker from Jacksonville, North Carolina, went to White Oak High School, 5'11", 220 pounds. Certainly a play that he will add to his highlight reel. It's great anticipation. South Carolina coaches like what they saw on film when scouting this Western Carolina defense. This change of direction there by Rico Dowdle. And it bears repeating the amount of young talent that's in Columbia right now has given so much hope, so much energy to this program, and Dowdle part of that youth movement. Will Muschamp told us he wanted to get back to running the football. They've been successful the last four games when they've been able to run it. And he said the mindset of this team, the identity, it's an inside zone read yep. team. We've seen that tonight. Uh, they are pounding the field in between the guards. Bentley throwing two of the numbers. That's broken up, intended for Samuel. And it's going to be fourth down. So we did not have a single punt in the first half. And now both teams will punt to start the second half. Yeah, that was just great coverage there by Trey Morgan. They were trying to get a stick route and get um, him to come back right at the sticks. And it just wasn't happening. Trey Morgan was draped all over the wide receiver and managed to get inside and go with the appropriate hand to get a pass break up there and force the punt. And Western Carolina will get some decent field position um, now that they've stopped, now that they've stopped them and, and forced a three and out. Sean Kelly to punt. It'll be Connell Young back deep. Young waiting at his 35. Good punt by Kelly. It'll take a bounce near the 40. Young lets it roll inside the 30 and down to the 26, a 51-yard kick. There was a flag on the play. It's against the offense, the kicking team. Illegal formation, more than four in the backfield on the kicking team. That penalty being forced from the end of the kick. First down, timeout. He knows what's at stake today. There's Cocky, the costumed mascot. Senior day for South Carolina. Gamecocks bowl eligible. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, my. On the other side, you've got Western Carolina, the Catamounts, which is a wild cat, like a cougar, a lynx. Newsom with the call on first down for a pickup of five. It's great first down yardage, you know, and that was something that was a point of emphasis for this offense was to try to win on first down. Using tempo. Newsom once again, and he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage by T.J. Holloman, a fifth-year senior and a mainstay on this defense for years. A little jaw jacking going on down there inside of the trenches. Play action, Adams pumps. Rolling out, throws on the run, incomplete. Good coverage that time by Lamont. Spearman Robinson, the intended target. Yeah, Adams is just not comfortable at this point in his career and handling those types of passing situations. And I think he will develop there. He's got the tools and the skill set. But that's tough for him, and especially when you've got a South Carolina defense at that time, drop back eight, really clogged up the passing windows and lanes, made it really hard for him to find the space in the window that was comfortable, and he threw an ill-advised ball on the sideline that could have been picked off. Ian Berryman, fourth in the FCS in punting average, 45 yards a kick, and Lamont's a fair catch at the 15-yard line. 
Auburn and Alabama A&M right here on the SEC Network. It's 7.30 Eastern Ole Miss, Vandy, 8 p.m. Auburn with its final game before the Iron Bowl. Ole Miss, Vandy, Rebels going for bowl eligibility. This is the time of the year where you have SEC, FCS games, one out of four SEC versus FCS games in front of us today. Austin P taking on Kentucky. That's a close game. Austin P was up 13-0 for a little while. Chattanooga at Alabama and Alabama A&M against Auburn. Rico Dowdle to the outside. Has some room across the 30. Finally taken down near the 45-yard line. Another strong run by Dowdle. Yeah, and he's been doing it with force, but this particular time, just a great job with an excellent cut to get outside, to bounce outside, and the offensive line that caved that side down, which allowed him to hit the corner. Rico Dowdle, this kid is for real, and he certainly knows what to do when the ball's in his hands. Over 100 yards with that last run of 31 yards, dangerous pass, and that's twice Bentley has gone for that quick screen, and twice... Kendall White has been right there to break it up. He's getting a great read on this play. And if I were the Gamecocks, I may have to sneak that play away and save it for another time. <laughs> he split two blockers on this play. The previous play where he made it, he only beat one. This time, Kendall White was so persistent, he split two blockers on the outside edge. Fine play, young man. Back to the ground, back to Dowdle. Across midfield and into Catamount territory. Getting a little chippy near midfield. 51 Corey Helms, the Wake Forest transfer. State pride's on the line, Anish. Anytime you get, you know, teams that are in the same proximity and that carry the same Carolina on your name, trust me, it's a big deal. And, you know, and I know playing at the University of Texas, anybody, anytime we played someone within our state, it was a big deal. Against a four-man rush, Bentley on the run looking for Dowdle who makes the catch. Tenth catch of the season for Rico Dowdle. Put a star next to that one. Well, let me start by saying, did you see Bentley by time? I mean, he looked like a Bentley out there controlling and commanding traffic, but you're right, the catch right here, spectacular. Dowdle on the ground. Barreling up the middle, and he's to the 25-yard line again of five. Rico Dowdle, a lightly recruited high school quarterback. Most of his interest came from small schools, but the running backs coach here at South Carolina, Brian McClendon, was at Georgia, and he's got a pretty good track record of finding running backs. Todd Gurley, Nick Chubb, to name a couple. Mm -hmm. And you said it early in the first half, they liked his ability to break tackles. Yep. Will Muschamp and Kurt Roper told us, you need that in the SEC. Indeed. This is David Williams. And the junior with a short game, third Three. down. Williams entered the season as South Carolina's most experienced running back and didn't make the greatest first impression. He was kicked out of the first fall practice after being number one on the depth chart coming out of the spring. And he's had a role on this team, but he's been surpassed. It was A.J. Turner early, and really the, the last quarter of the season, it's been Rico Dowdle shouldering the load in the run game. Sometimes you, you, you just need to check yourself. And, you know, and I've, I've won a job and lost a job, and sometimes that helps you refocus. Bentley again, buying time on the run. Gets away and runs for the first down. You're telling me he's a freshman? <laughs> <laughs> oh, in the stare down of the sideline. I, I mean, this is this is what makes him so special. He went through his progression. You could see it there. He saw three or four in his progression, and then just took off running and managed to get outside of the tackle from Daniel Riddle. Yeah, Bentley, this young man, he's got the tools. He's got the skill set to really be special at the quarterback position.
David Williams slips one tackle, changes direction. He's going to have to work his way out of an ambush, and that won't happen. A loss of six yards on the play, second and long. Yeah, Western Carolina, they won there at the line of scrimmage. And there was just nowhere for Williams to run. There's South Carolina's running backs coach, Bobby Bentley. I mentioned Brian McClendon. He was the running backs coach at Georgia. He's the co-OC at South Carolina. Bobby Bentley is the father of the quarterback, Jake Bentley. Bobby, a longtime head coach in the state of South Carolina at Burns High School, very successful. That's caught by Samuel, near sideline at the 14. It'll bring up third and manageable. Yeah, I asked Coach Muschamp, I said, you know, how's the interaction between Jake and Bobby in the facility? And he said, you know, Bobby doesn't really say much to him, and that's the way we would like for it to happen. Sure. And, you know, and I think that's the wise decision, but you got to be a proud papa sitting here watching your freshman son um, compete in SEC play. Here's the blitz on third down. Bentley stands in, and that one got away from him fourth down. Yeah, it looked like at that uh, Debo shut his route down and Bentley was expecting him to carry through and they're talking it over right now on the sideline as you can tell some miscommunication there because there was grass on the outside had Samuel just continued his route so Elliot Fry who is perfect inside 40 this season will come on for a 32 yard field goal had the game winner from 55 in the season opener against Vandy he remains perfect with room to spare from 32. 38-17 South Carolina on top of Western Carolina. Had not had great quarterback play the last few years. There were a couple names in there, Kelly and, and Dak Prescott. I would agree but with from that. top to bottom, well now all of a sudden you've got a new wave. And you've got players who are coming and making an impact as Newsom, who's made a big impact in this game, takes it to the 45-yard line. That this is a big drive for Western Carolina to keep this game competitive before you worry about it getting out of hand. Your defense has taken a beating against this South Carolina rushing attack. Well, that's a good start to the drive, a big return like that. The only bad part about that is Detrez is a little bit tired, so he's going to have to come off on the sideline. But I think if you're a Western Carolina, you've got great field position now with an opportunity to try to go and score some points. Connell Young. He is upended by LeMans after a short gain. Tyree Adams, the quarterback for Western Carolina, just three out of 13. He does have 76 yards on the ground, has made a lot of plays with his feet, has struggled throwing the ball against this South Carolina defense. Adams rolling to his right. Gets away from pressure, finds Robinson, and that is the six foot four Spearman Robinson, and it's third and short. Yeah, those are just off schedule plays you know when you've got an athlete like Tyree Adams at the quarterback position there's times he'll get you in trouble trying to do too much there's time that he'll bail you out of a bad play like he did just now when it didn't look like it was anything there and he still managed to find Robinson in the flat there's the pitch and a first down Connell Young to the South Carolina 40. Connell Young last week, a career-high 42 yards in the loss to Furman. Western Carolina led that game 21-20 midway through the third before the Paladins scored the final 29 points of the game. Newsom back in. Adams will throw. Spearman Robinson again. And finally dragged down by Montak and King after a gain of 22. Yeah, I, my, my key to the game for South Carolina was to defend the run pass option successfully, and that's what that play is. They've had some success today. The Catamounts have, especially in the middle of the field, once they have those linebackers suck into the run. Um, let's see if they continue to go back to it. Newsom rejoins Adams in the backfield. Adams will keep it on the zone read. Up the middle inside the 10. 
And oh. he's close to another first down. Yeah, after getting leveled by Sawyer Hall. Oh. He left his feet, 6'3", 275, and it didn't even see it didn't even seem as though Adam saw him. And Dietrez Newsom takes it to the five-yard line. Now this Western Carolina team, give Mark Spear and his staff credit. They've not gone away. This is their final game of the regular season. No postseason for them, but this is something you can take into the offseason. Absolutely. You know, and and I think even Adams, his ability to utilize his feet, something that I think will help him moving forward. Direct snap, Connell Young is Adams went in motion. Young fighting for yards, and Connell Young with his second touchdown of the game. That was a that was a nicely executed drive there. I mean, had command the entire time they were out on the football field. Sprinkled in a little passing game and the running rushing attack. There's a man down for South Carolina. I agree. You know, I'm wondering where a lot of these fans went. It did get considerably colder. And when the game started, it was really nice. It was a pleasant day. It was, what, 65 degrees or so. And maybe they went to go get warm. I, I wouldn't blame them. I know you because you know, I didn't bring my jacket. You, did you didn't give me the memo, so. <laughs> I warned you. I said it was going to get colder <laughs> later in the night. You didn't believe me. <laughs> you gave me a hard time for bringing the jacket, and now here you are. <laughs> Covered up at the 32-yard line. Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, it's SEC inside, an all-access pass to Mississippi State. Uh, against their game with Arkansas, and we'll show you never before see footage and sounds from pregame to postgame. SEC Inside on the SEC Network, also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Alma, did you expect the South Carolina starters to be in this late in the ballgame? I did not. You know, in, in all frankness, I did not. I, you, know, I, I, you expected with their offensive talent and the way they've been playing. Um, that they come out here, but give Western Carolina credit. They fought, and they fought hard. He's run hard, and that's Rico Dowdle, a gain of 11, up to 133 yards rushing, his career high, 149. Yeah, his patience and understanding, I think, of offensive concepts, being a former high school quarterback, I think it pays off for him when you watch him run. I mean, he's just got a great instinct for finding those creases and allowing... Um, the play to set up and oftentimes young backs are too eager and they miss those types of opportunities Dowdle makes a cut Ooh. Had a catamount on his jersey, but still able to pick up three second and seven His numbers Rico Dowdle in his senior year of high school where he played quarterback in Asheville, North Carolina 1,200 passing yards, 2,300 rushing wow. yards, 10 passing touchdowns, 51 wow. rushing touchdowns. That is impressive. Hurst goes in motion. On the ground once more, Dowdle. He picks up another South Carolina first down. And and that vision is what stood out today and, and the games that he's been successful. Patience from a young runner. You know, and vision helps you in a number of ways, but it also helps you set up defenders. And that time there, he just completely set up Fred Payne, the safety for the Catamounts. Yeah, he was coming downhill full speed trying to get a big hit on him. And Dowdle kept his feet clean by anticipating where he was going to be and had a nice jump cut to escape, to escape uh, a tackle. Bentley getting the play call from the sideline, South Carolina. Letting the clock run a little. Dowdle. And he spins forward to the 39. Give him three more. Second down. And he's got a career not high now in yards with 150. He's done it. On just 16 carries, he scored the first two touchdowns for South Carolina. And now comes off the field, a slight limp. Rod Talley, a former walk-on, who began his career at FCS Gardner-Webb into the game. <laughs> uh, 
trips to the field. Tally straight ahead to the 34. Third down. Trey Hardy on the tackle. And you start to see now South Carolina looking to bleed this clock a little. They've got Clemson less next week. Big rivalry game, obviously. And with a win today, the Gamecocks would become bowl eligible. And against a quick strike offense, Will Muschamp looking to take the air out of the ball. Bentley on the slant, incomplete for Samuel. Broken up by Kendall White, who has really been a factor in the passing game for Western Carolina. He, he just covered the best wide receiver on the field, Debo Samuel. I mean, Kendall White is having a day. He's undersized at 5'11". He's, you know, probably um, maybe even a safety at the next level at 220. But that time covering Debo Samuel in the slot, that was a spectacular play by a young man that is not supposed to be making those types of plays, but they trust him in coverage and against the run. Offense out of the field on fourth down. Rico Dowdle back in, fourth and three. Here's the blitz. Bentley takes a huge hit, gets rid of it to Dowdle, who is swarmed for a loss. And Western Carolina will take over on downs. We talked to defensive coordinator Blake Gideon earlier in the week, and he said, listen, we're not going to sit on our hands, on our heels. We are going to bring the pressure. That time they're opting to go with the blitz. Watch it here. You've got a five-man rush. They twist. Avery Warsham does a good job of getting to the quarterback, and Daniel Riddle on the outside, just a great job of coming up and making a play. This defense really lit it up. Pardon me, Daniel Nash doing a fine job, and now they hand the ball back over to their offense. Adams off play action over the middle, and that is caught. Wow. Spearman Robinson. I don't know how he snatched that out of the air. One hand. That was sweet. And then <laughs> cradled it in the left. And a little banged up on the play as he comes off with the left hand a little gimpy. It got, got, got hung up underneath him, but... He caught it with his right hand. Watch this. This is sweet. Switches it to his left hand. All the meanwhile, yeah, that, was, that was a nice play. Four catches, 105 yards for Robinson, a native of Greenwood, South Carolina, about 90 minutes west of here. Adams looking to run, and he sneaks across the 40. This game, every time it looks like South Carolina is one drive away from putting this game away. Western Carolina finds an answer, finds a stop. This does not look like a two-win team from the FCS. And if you're South Carolina, you got to shut the door right now. Adams again to the air, incomplete. He wanted Swan, who was well covered. And it's third and eight with 28 seconds to go in the third. You know, and this is a defense that at times has looked the part like an SEC team, and Will Muschamp said it yesterday. It's also a defense that has looked inept at times, not being able to hold true to alignment assignment football. And now on a third down, you would expect Will Muschamp and Coach Robinson, the defensive coordinator, to bring the pressure here and to force Western Carolina's hand. Newsom goes in motion. Adams will run. He's been doing this all afternoon, all evening, running on third down. And now it sets up a fourth and short, four down territory for Mark Spear and this Western Carolina team. And as the clock winds down here in the third quarter, boy, if you're the Catamounts, You've hung in there now for three quarters. You're driving. There's got to be confidence on that sideline. I couldn't agree with you more, Anish. It has been a try. All right, so the guy with the jacket. <laughs> My man. Who apparently was cold, colder than everybody else. He's, he's got the A on his chest. The jacket is now more open. <laughs> but the guy with the M, man, I think he could use at least the hat. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Fourth and one to begin the fourth quarter for Western Carolina. 
The give is to Newsome, and he picks up the first. It looked like he got it on the initial surge, that was close. and uh, maybe this might be this might be looked at. This will be close. South Carolina saying they made the stop on the initial spot. It looked like they gave him the first down. They're going to measure. Antoine Wilder coming off the edge and made the initial contact. Did a fine job of getting to the play. You go back to two plays in this game for Western Carolina. One on their very first drive deep in their own zone. They turn it over. South Carolina scores. Huge measurements here. They didn't get it. No, they didn't get it. You're right. Great job. And that's twice now. Fourth and short this time from the 32. They had first and goal inside the two-yard line. Could not score. Where they were stopped on downs. And that play was made by Wilder. He knew that was a run. You'll see him come right off your screen and made the initial contact. You see the knee went down yeah. before Newsom got the extra yards. And the initial spot by the ref, it looked like he had the first down. But then you see where that knee first goes down. It's where the ball Great is when that stop. knee first goes down. Good call by the refs on getting that spot right. And, and South Carolina blame. takes over. I don't blame Coach for going for it no. on either of those fourth downs. Listen, you don't, you know, you, you've got to use all the bullets that you've got. And going for them, I think, shows confidence in your team. Dowdle running right side, gets a block. He's got the 40 running hard across the 45 to the 47, a gain of 15. Yeah, this is an impressive young prospect right here. And, yeah, I mean, I love his demeanor, too. You know, he just doesn't seem like a guy that gets too high, too low. Great job, once again, of setting up defenders to be able to cut in and out um, with explosive, with an explosive nature to get in and out of his breaks. Mason Zandi, the only senior starter for South Carolina. Dowdle again. 175 yards rushing. And stayed in bounds, even as a freshman. Senior night for Dan Zandi, who is part Iranian. It's where his dad Ali is from. Dad, his dad fled during the revolution in the 70s. Came here with no money, no concept, no grasp of the English language. Worked at a restaurant. Eventually owned a restaurant and, Love and became a story. successful electrician. And now his son playing SEC football and South Carolina able to pick up a first down with Turner. That's the American dream, isn't I it? I love hearing those stories, you know, just great. And at 6'9", 315, he certainly has the frame to play at the next level. And playing in the SEC, he certainly put some things on film and, and has a good body of work. I wouldn't be surprised to see him stick with an NFL team. Again, South Carolina content to run a little clock. A.J. Turner, who had an ankle injury that he was nursing this week, picks up four. He's given this team some tough yards tonight. I think they've gotten production out of Dowdle, Williams, and Turner tonight and when they've needed it. And, and you're right, you know, and I, I think with this three-headed monster that they do feature, you know, two of these guys have gotten a lot of reps and starts in Dowdle and Turner, and Williams, as you said earlier, is an experienced player. So I really like this group of backs they have, especially if you combine it with the quarterback and the wide receiver. Turner right up the middle, and he bullies his way across the 30. Close to another first down, third and short. Turner's a redshirt freshman. Dowdle's a true freshman. Williams is a junior, so they're all back next year. Yeah, that, that's scary. You know, and it, you know, if, if you are in the SEC, and particularly in the East, you want to watch out for this ball club. And we know that Will Muschamp is very familiar with the SEC and a head coach, an assistant coach, and he knows what it takes to win in this conference. Turner right up the gut again. And a first down for South Carolina. What Will Muschamp appears to have here in Columbia that he never had at Florida, he's got a quarterback. And, you know, he told us yesterday, if you have a quarterback, you have a chance, especially in college football. Absolutely. What we've seen out of Bentley as a freshman, boy, 
it gets you salivating for what he can be next year. Very true. And potentially the year after. I don't know if he's going to be around past that. <laughs> Indeed. 38 to 25, <laughs> South Carolina on the move here in the fourth. In Columbia, Western Carolina has never beaten an FBS team. A.J. Turner dives to the 19-yard line. South Carolina came in having won three of their last four, and in the three wins, it was a run-heavy approach. It's been a run-heavy approach tonight. I think that's the formula for them because what it allows them to do is to get into their play-action game with Jake Bentley, and we know he's a traditional pocket passer, and so I, I think when you're running the football like that, not only are you controlling the clock, but you're controlling the line of scrimmage, and they've been able to do that um, with success over the last several ball games. Play clock down to two, down to one. They get the playoff. AJ Turner. That's actually Bentley on the keeper. And Jake Bentley. Moves the chains, first and goal at the six. He's just athletic enough that you have to hold the DN on him. And that time there, the defensive end just went flying by, and he makes a good decision. You see, he was reading that defensive end, or pardon me, number 24, and as soon as he caved in, Bentley knew he had the edge, and that's just free yardage and doing a good job. What I would say is on the end of that run, he's got to do a better job of protecting himself, whether that means sliding or falling to the ground. He just can't take those big shots because this team really does need him, especially now that he's elevated himself as the leader of this team. Turner. He's to the two-yard line. There is a flag at the end of the play. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 51 on the offense. That's a 15-yard penalty. It is second down. And here's what that does. Let's say South Carolina ends up kicking a field goal. It's still a two-score game. Yeah, this hurts. That, you know, it's just, it's uncalled for, and you, you've got to stop when you hear that whistle. And, you know, right guard Corey Helms, who the, the penalty was called on, has to do a better job of, of keeping his emotions in check. You're on the doorstep there with a chance to put this game away. Maybe get some of the backups, Perry yeah. Orth into the game on senior night. And this could potentially drag things on. Bentley to Turner. Cuts it back toward the middle, and he doesn't get far. Taken down at the 20 by Avery Worsham, and it's third and goal. 20 yards to go. That was a great defensive effort there. I mean, there was nowhere to run, and they played it to perfection. Everybody was running their lanes and keeping the ball on the appropriate shoulder. Wonderful defense there that now sets up a third and long situation, and Blake Gideon, the defensive coordinator, in these types of situations has shown a tendency to bring the blitz. It's a four-man rush. Bentley with time. He finds Edwards. He powers inside the 10. And it's fourth down. So Elliot Fry, who is perfect inside 40 this season and is connected for 32 in this game, will come on for a field goal try. This is a 24-yarder. And South Carolina's all-time points leader drills it. 41 to 25, still a two-possession game by committee, but you got the sense he sort of is the de facto coordinator. Yeah, well, first off, this kid loves football. I've been covering him since high school, and I can tell you this much. His father is a high school coach, was a high school coach in the state of Texas. He grew up around the game, started every game at the University of Texas. It was fun to watch him and Will Muschamp, you know, they formed that relationship and Will has really taken him under his wing in the coaching ranks. And 
even down to the point when he took over and assumed the role as defensive coordinator, he called Will, knowing that they were going to be pay playing each other and said, hey, Will, help me out here. And Will, you know, gave along advice just like a mentor would. Gideon told us Will Muschamp was his introduction to college football. <laughs> oh, Newsom has a seed. Across midfield, Detroit Newsom. He's going to take it to the house. These catamounts just do not go away. <laughs> wow. They had some trickery on the back end. Fake the reverse, and Newsom took it to the house. The Catamounts, great design here, great fake, which held the backside, which didn't allow them to be able to get to the backside as the Catamounts here are lining up for two again. Well, you have to go for two here. You're down 16, so you were down eight. by two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. You get this. One score ball game. Boy. Wow. And how about Western Carolina, the first team to score 30 or more points against South Carolina this season. The Gamecocks came into this game one of six teams not to have given up 30-plus points, and it's Western Carolina who breaks through the 30-point mark. Huge two-point conversion. And movement up front on the left side of that Catamounts offensive line. Ball start on the offense. Number 68. That's a five yard penalty. Try down. Tanner Poindexter, the left guard. Coming into this week, the only other teams that hadn't given up 30 or more in a game Michigan, Washington, Ohio State, Auburn, and LSU. This would make it a one score game. to throw, end zone, broke it up. Steven Montek got his hands on it. And it's a 10-point game with 9.13 left. Yeah, he just read the quarterback's eyes. Adams there stood down, uh, stared down the wide receiver, and he just got in the passing lane, managed to bat it down. Big play there to, to prevent them from getting within a score. We get a studio update now from Dari Noka. Yeah, Anish... This SEC right now brought to you by State Farm. Kentucky needed a little while to get away from Austin P. South Carolina can't get away from Western. Well, finally, Kentucky has run away, looking for their first bowl game since 2010. That's Boom Williams into the end zone. Benny Snell just went in. Back to my brother from another Anish. My man, Dory. How about Kentucky <laughs> and the about face that they've had this season? Much like South Carolina, we saw them in week one. They blew a 35-10 lead against Southern Miss, and then struggled against New Mexico State for a half, and you're wondering, man, this could be the end of Mark Stoops. And they've turned that tide around, and Kentucky is now going bowling. They'll take on Louisville next week in their rivalry game. South Carolina, if they can hold on over the final nine plus minutes, they'd be going bowling after a two and four start. Gamecocks have done it in large part because of youth. Benny Snell, the running back, really emerged yep. for Kentucky. Absolutely. Second half of the season. Oh, there, there it is. Those are the moves I'm talking about right there. Yes, sir. We need to see the full version. Here's Debo Samuel. He's taking a kick back. <laughs> Samuel breaks a tackle, spinning. And pinball wizard all the way to the 40-yard line. This college football season, stream every game live on the ESPN app and on Watch ESPN. Download the app or visit WatchESPN.com today. This Western Carolina team came in 2-8, and 1-7. and seven. Injured Catamount. That's Zachary Green. 6'3", sophomore out of Randleman, North Carolina. And we saw some crazy things last year. Yeah. The Citadel, an FCS yeah, team. Yeah, absolutely. 
beat South Carolina. And this SOCON conference, listen, you're not going to yeah. compare it to the SEC, but it's one of the better conferences in the FCS. This is Rico Dowdle. Explodes into the secondary. Dowdle deep into Catamount territory and still not going down. He's up over 200 yards today with a 44-yard run. L listen, if you don't know this kid, you better get to know him because he's the real deal. And once again, an excellent job of seeing the backside. He hit the cutback again. And watch this. No, sir, you will not tackle me. And he's still fighting for yardage even after the play is over. Rico Daddle doing his thing. Twentieth carry of the game for Dowdle, and he gets to the 15-yard line for a short pickup. He has done everything tonight except throw a football over a mountain. <laughs> yeah. 220 yards, 11 yards a pop, a couple of touchdowns, and the 220 yards the most by a Gamecock this season. And he's just got an aggressive nature. <laughs> he really does. You know, he's looking to bring the pain when they give him the pill. A violent runner. High snap, Dowdle. He just refuses to go down. Takes it inside the 10-yard line. Third down, South Carolina. He did have the one fumble. But other than that, boy, a Herculean effort by the freshman from Asheville. It is scary to think how good this team can be next year and the year after. Here's Debo Samuel. And he is going to be canceled. Right at the nine yard line by A.J. Newman. Yeah, A.J. Newman made the play, but it was Kendall White who got in the backfield and didn't allow him to turn that corner, which strung it out. Now you've got a fourth down situation. Offense is out on the field. A field goal makes it 44-31. It's still a, a two-score game. I don't know. I probably kicked the field goal here. Well, what, what they're thinking is you can pin them back and make them drive the length of the field. And you, and you have not seen the ability out of Adams today to really throw the football downfield with the exception of the one play that he had to Spearman Robinson. They're going to let the clock run down. And did they call a timeout? Delay of game. Okay. So they'll kick now more yeah. than likely. Absolutely. So Will Muschamp just looking to burn some time off of that clock. 6.28 to go now in regulation. And Elliot Fry, who's already connected twice, will come on to make this a 13-point game. And you saw the special teams unit for Western Carolina um, did just take one to the house. Fry hits his third field goal of the night. 44 to 31, Gamecock. The evolution of dance, there it is, folks. <laughs> dance like nobody's watching. Napoleon Dynamite, oh boy. <laughs> the two young ladies behind him. They're like, we didn't come with him, sorry. <laughs> the spirit fingers, wow, he brought out the spirit fingers. <laughs> Hang on, so our friend there who was wearing the A, we're gonna go back to him after the kick. <laughs> Dietrez Newsom returned the last kick for his score. He'll run this out of the end zone. Newsom taken out of bounds shy of the 35-yard line. All right, so there's our friend. He was wearing a jacket, the one with the tie and the A. He's taking the hat off. He's finally committed to the cause, but we did catch him a moment ago. He was waving the towel. He was looking at his phone, so I'm still questioning if he's all in. He's just setting up his plans for tonight after a Gamecock victory. <laughs> That's great. 44-31, Tyree Adams, 6 out of 17, 124 passing, 95 rushing. Adams throwing to the sideline, it's juggled and caught by Aubrey Payne. True freshman tight end, they really like what 
he has a chance to become at Color Week. Originally, he had committed to East Carolina, but then was left without a scholarship after the coaching change there and came to Western Carolina. So this is a guy who is a Division I FBS prospect. Adams under pressure and sacked by Darius English, his ninth of the season. Well, that's what he does. And, you know, and in speaking of this staff, one of the best pass rushers, one of the best pass rushers on the team, you're going to see him right here. That's the guy you want to keep an eye on. And watch him just get this edge. Flights off the blocker. Great determination. He kept his feet clean by, get, by forcing the blocker down. Great technique. That resulted in a sack. Young goes in motion. Adams in trouble. Gets away and finally taken down from behind by Sawyer. And it's fourth down. Offense comes off the field. The punter, Ian Berryman, and the punt team on. Hey, listen, 440 to go. You may not get the ball back. Fake. No, not here. <laughs> not, not, yeah, I don't think you want to give them this type of field position. They're banking on their defense to be able to get a stop. Not a good punt by the usually outstanding Berryman. South Carolina gets the ball back. 421 left here in regulation. Zaxby's food has always brought people together. leading the Catamounts of Western Carolina. There's a guy again, and he is on his phone. <laughs> oh, man. The paint is starting to wear off. <laughs> oh, man, you got to love your fans, man. And I've, I've always admired people who, in, in these types of conditions, don't have clothes on because that's oh, not easy. You've been whining in every commercial yeah. break with your yeah, suit. I sure am. About why you didn't bring a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> A.J. Turner gets the call on first down from the 46. Jake Bentley still in there at quarterback. I don't think any of us expected the South Carolina starters to still be in the game at this point, but you've got to credit Mark Spear and the Western Carolina coaching staff. They've had to go through some turmoil, especially on the defensive side with Dustin Landry, the defensive coordinator, being fired last month. They've hung in this game. They, they haven't really, it seems like South Carolina would put the game away. The Catamounts have an answer. They need a stop here, though, to have any chance. Turner, and he's going to pick up a first down. Yeah, you've got to give Western Carolina credit um, for the fight they've shown tonight. And you've also got to look at the fact that this is a young South Carolina team. So, you know, when you're young and we're talking to the coach staff, the one thing they said is we want to make sure that our guys understand the importance of this game. Yeah, bowl eligibility is what this is about, but it's also about preparing for a team that people expect you to beat. And when you play at a, a, a top-notch program like South Carolina, I can say this having played at Texas, is sometimes it's hard to get up for these games. So mentally, you've got to be ready and to prepare yourself throughout the week. 68% of the South Carolina roster, freshmen or sophomores, 13 true freshmen have seen the field this year for Will Muschamp. 19 first-time starters, seven of which are true freshmen, and the seven true freshman starters most in the FBS. Wow. And it's the only team in all of major college football to have a freshman leading the team in passing yards and rushing yards. Wow. Still a young team. I mean, that's the point. It's amazing. You know, you got to give Will Muschamp and the staff credit for the way that they've um, developed the talent throughout the year after starting off Rocky and then putting in the right guys and letting those guys play. That's Turner again, hammerheading through the middle. He's got a chance at 100 yards. 
Well, next up for South Carolina, the game the fan base circled before the season started. The Palmetto Bowl against Clemson. It'll be a big one. Well, we know what's at stake for the Tigers. You know, if they beat Wake Forest tonight, you're talking about a Clemson team with a win. They're in position with a win in the ACC championship they're to in. be in the college football Absolutely. playoff. And South Carolina would have a chance to torpedo all of Clemson's dreams. And bowl eligibility is great. Doing that to your rival, you can attest to that, having been Absolutely. in rivalry games, that's even sweeter. Yeah, it is. It, and, you know, and, and it'll be fun for these young guys who haven't had an opportunity yet to um, partake in a rivalry game like that with that much intensity. And, yeah, I, I, I think when you look at these teams, you see the records and, you know, frankly, we, we've all covered enough um, of, well, we've got to give this young man credit as he comes into the game. Um, backup quarterback, Perry Orth. Yeah, Perry Orth getting a nice ovation. The senior getting one last chance to say goodbye here at williams Bryce. That's awesome. We'll get back to Clemson in a moment, but let Perry Orth have his. No doubt. You know, Muschamp said he's handled every situation the right way here, and, and they wish him well. It's hard with this youth movement. To be a senior, to be a former walk-on, to want to earn a starting job, and now you've got to make way for two young guys. Um, but he's done it the right way, and this young man has a bright future, whether he plays football or not. By the way, he carries himself and the type of humility he lives with. You felt for him because he was the face of the program. He was the quarterback. Yeah.